man, I am so excited for you to be on. Like, I, I've been I've been waiting for this, and and I know you've been excited too. So thanks for being on the show, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I always like to kind of uh, give people, you know, an inside depth, uh, you know, kind of backstory, um, you know, of where you've came from mm -hmm. and where you're at today. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I know a little bit because I've, you know, we've known each other for like 15 years, but yeah. help, uh, you know, fill me in on, you know, where you were born, where you were raised yeah. and like take me through kind of your childhood just, a, you know, a little bit here. Um, I'm from Gary, Indiana. I was born in Gary, Indiana, but I'm a Minnesotan through and through. I was born in Gary, Indiana. Moved to Arkansas, moved back to Gary, Indiana, uh, moved to Minnesota. Parents brought me to Minnesota when I was in second grade. Okay. Uh, spent spent um, <clears throat> my summers in Gary, Indiana, mm -hmm. but um, I had two older brothers. Um, my my brothers my brothers chose a little different path than me, which is which is fine, but they're doing mm -hmm. well well right now. And um, so I grew up I grew up in I didn't I mean I didn't grow up in a I grew up in a situation. It was, it wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible because my my mother, my mother was a super super strong lady, really strong mm -hmm. lady. My mom was my mom was so strong at times we like, we didn't really even know we were poor. <laughs> she she took care. <laughs> I didn't realize I was poor until I was like sixteen. And I've been poor my whole life. Like I was poor, <laughs> I was poor for a long time, right? Yeah. But um, so my my uh, oldest brother and. Uh, Ended up leaving Minnesota, got in, got a little bit of trouble. And mm -hmm. my oldest brother, six years older than me, the, my middle brother is three years older than me. Mm -hmm. He got a little bit of trouble when I was when we were, I was pretty young. I think he was he's probably seventeen or eighteen. I think mm -hmm. I was I don't know how old that was. Um, but my my middle brother would get he was getting into trouble in in and out of trouble, uh, going to like group homes and okay. back home and things like that when I was a kid. But um, my brothers. Sold, sold drugs and yeah. gang members and things like that, but so it was just my mom and I a lot. Yeah. And your father? Um, my father. Um, my father left when I was my father left when I was about ten. Yeah, he left when I was ten. He was addicted to, addicted to drugs. Um, okay. He was kind of in in and out of, in and out of my life. Um, here and there, he was addicted to drugs. He'd come in sometimes and leave for a long time. Mm -hmm. to come in, so I saw my father. For the first, it had been like 10 years. So I saw him for the first time in 10 years last summer. Um, he's, doing, he's doing all right, still struggling a little bit. Yeah. But um, he's a good dude. I, I, I love my dad. I love my dad to death. I know some people be like, wow, your dad left, blah, blah, blah. My dad, my dad, my dad did, did enough so I could be in the right situation right now. Same with same yeah. my brothers. My brothers, people ask me all the time because my brothers uh, didn't, so much, didn't complete high school and things mm -hmm. like that. They ask me all the time, well, how how did you get to where where you are? Well, first and foremost, for me, is God, right? Yeah. I mean, I got put in situations, but my brothers did not allow me to do the same things that they were doing. My mm -hmm. brothers took care of me. My middle brother Sean took took care of me forever. He he would he wasn't always at home, but when he he'd stop by and see me, he made sure I had money in my pocket and, and he just took care of me. But my but I mean, my mother was was, was really strong, yeah. really strong. So. Um, when I was growing up and school wise, I was, I got diagnosed, but like, I mean, schools were back, back in like the, 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 like mid, mid nineties schools were diagnosing, uh, African American males, like African American boys with EBD, emotional behavior disorder, LD, learning disabilities mm -hmm. and things like that. When they were like having a whole bunch of energy or they get mm -hmm. frustrated for things. So I was diagnosed with EBD and LD, uh, uh, emotional behavior disorder. And then learn disability. So I was in I was in special ed, right? Basically, okay. when you're in special ed, basically it says you have something, you have a handicap, is what mm -hmm. they say, right? So I was a special ed student. Um, I didn't really even learn how to read a little bit until about sixth grade. I know that sounds crazy, really, but yeah, I couldn't I couldn't read. I couldn't put full sentences together. And oh things wow! Like that. Yeah, I had I had a difficult. It was just something that was difficult for me. Right. So but, when did wrestling come in the picture? Wrestling. I started wrestling uh, in third grade. Third grade. Yeah, I started wrestling okay. in third grade, and uh, wrestling just made me just tough mentally and, and physically. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, um, third grade, I started wrestling. I met a guy uh, named Josh McClay, who okay. um, wrestled for the University of Minnesota. Him and his father, mm -hmm. Jerry. Jerry. Jerry was a uh, taxi 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 driver, and he'd drive us around. To all over the state in his in his taxi, take us to practice. 
So um, I met the McClays, and McClays are a large, huge reason mm. why, like, why I'm sitting in front of you today. And then after, I, and this is how God has worked in my life. He's all in every opportunity. He's given me so many opportunities to put so many mm-hmm. different people in my life yep. to, to have me win and succeed. So in third grade, I met, I met Josh McClay and Jerry McClay, who took care of me took care of me forever, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I, after I kind of, we kind of, they moved to Hastings. Uh, Josh ended up becoming a three-time state champ wrestling for the Gophers. Mm -hmm. And then um, we moved back to Bloomington. And um, then in sixth grade, I met, I met the Ness family, Jay Ness in sixth grade. He came up to me in practice. I'll never forget this. Comes up to me in practice and said, my buddy John Hanson and I came up to the practice and said, hey, uh, you ever want to come over to my house? You guys want to come over to my house and help my, my and help my son out with wrestling? At the time, he's talking about his son Jason, who is just yeah. a monster, Hodge mm-hmm. Trophy winner, mm-hmm. national champion. He's still competing right now. Yeah. Um. So he asked us. Jason's uh, four years younger than me. So, he, so I went over to Jay's house and never left his house. I mean, I was over there, Christmas, Thanksgiving. Um, yeah. I was over there, not even wrestling, playing basketball and things like that. And Jay just like. He just yeah. took me in as his, as his son. Like, yeah. I mean, literally, mm-hmm. took me in, would feed me. I'd be crabby from cutting weight. His <laughs> wife Sally would always be getting on me, but they they always kept my confidence up. They never they never ever treated me different than they treated their own kids. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. still to this day, I'll get a text message from Jay, and Jay's like, "Hey, son, how you doing?" All the time. Mm-hmm. I'm 35 years old. Mm-hmm. You know, he still treats me like I'm his like I'm his son. Yeah. So. Um, I've had so many people get put in my life the, to, to be on the, 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 I guess you want to say the right path. Yep. Right? So what do you, how much do you think wrestling has attributed to uh, where you're at today I think it's, in your life? I think it's been huge. I mean, after, after I met Jay, then I had Coach Chuck Vavarosky, my high school coach, who was a good mm-hmm. dude, who actually had been coaching me from fourth grade all the way through high school. Mm-hmm. who have been putting up with my BS, my yep. nonsense, getting in trouble in school, mm-hmm. him having to talk to me about it, me throwing my headgear across the mat, yep. him talking to me about it, about growing up and being mature. And then after, after I graduated, I went to um, Augsburg College where I met Jeff Swenson and Sam Barber. I mean, those are two of the mm-hmm. most top-notch guys I've ever met in my life. Yep. Right? So God's putting these people in my life. I'm telling you, along every path. So I meet Jeff Swenson and Sam Barber who, who basically – and I'll give you an example in a second, but who basically took me in as my father, Jeff, or took me in as their son. Jeff Swenson would come to my house when I was in high school every weekend to help help me fill out my FAFSA and anything I need to fill out for college. Wow. He did that for, I, he might have came every weekend for like a month or two months or something like that, but wow. he wanted me to come to Augsburg bad, and I wanted to be at Augsburg bad. It was the best decision I ever made in my life. Then I met mm-hmm. Sam Barber, who was like, who's like my older brother, who still takes care of me to this day. He's the mm-hmm. head coach of Air Force Academy. Yep. Um, he, he told me one day we were in, um, I'll never forget this, we were driving to California to do a J-Rob camp, and he told me, I didn't know how to pump gas. I, knew, I mean, I, I had pumped gas before, but I, not too often, right? So mm-hmm. I didn't really know how to pump gas. And, um, we're in Utah. I'll never forget this. <laughs> in Utah, I got out of the car uh, to pump gas, and I'm like, Barbara, I don't know how to pump gas. He looked at me and said, Tidwell, figure it out. Ever since that day, I've been figuring stuff out. That was my, mm-hmm. that was my freshman year. I was going to my sophomore year in college. And, I'm all, and like when I don't know how to do something, I was like, Tidwell, figure it out. Right? So how did you not pump gas in high school? Because I didn't get a car until my, my senior year. And this is, so this is the difference between like people growing up with money or privilege and people yeah. not, not having money. I didn't get a car until... Until my senior year. My mom got me, or the summer of my senior year. My in mom, high school? In high school. My mom okay. got me an 88 Oldsmobile. Mm. Which is, and my mom, and my mom didn't have a lot of money. My mom worked hard. My mom taught me how to work hard. My mom mm-hmm. worked her butt off for every single thing we got, right? right. So she bought me an 88 Oldsmobile. It was like, probably like a thousand bucks. Um, so usually I was rolling with my boy Pierre. And, um, usually he'd be pumping the gas or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you never <laughs> pump gas until your freshman year in college. Yeah, no, not really. No. Really? And I probably probably pump gas like once or twice before that but like really like really like pumping gas no i didn't know how to do it wow so um yeah because i i never had a car i mean my mom had a car yeah. or or a buddy marshall he would drive us around or i'd be riding with pierre and i always told myself i didn't get my license i didn't get my driver's license until uh my senior year in high school 
Really? Yeah, because I was like, wow. I mean, this is like a deficit mindset. I'm thinking like, well, my friend's got a car, so I don't need a car. Mm-hmm. Like Pierre had his car. We used to roll in his, I think it was like a, a Ford or something like that. It was a little maroon car. We used to roll, we used to yeah. roll in that <laughs> a lot. Yep. That's wild. So um, I know now, you know, now in your life, uh, so help help fill me in um, where you're at now and, and what you've accomplished uh, after college. Yeah. What have you done since postgraduate of your... All right. So, so like I said, I mean, nobody does anything on their own. Everybody's like, well, I, I made it from the bottom. Now I'm here. I did everything by myself. That's impossible. No one's done mm-hmm. anything by itself. So after I got done at Augsburg, my undergrad, I ended up getting a, a phone call from Jim Jackson, who was the ex-Apple Valley head wrestling coach. Mm-hmm. There's a position open. There's a paraprofessional position open. Um, and I had a degree in health and physical education, a double mm-hmm. major. I wanted to teach health and PE, but I was having a tough time passing this test, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I took the job as a para, and I was a para for a year. And I, I guess I did a pretty good job because the assistant principal, uh, Dr. Allen at Apple Valley High School, they cut my position, but she's like, uh, she saw something in me. So she went over to the middle school and called the middle school principal, mm-hmm. um, Dave McKegg, and said, hey, you got to come meet this guy. Um, he's, he's pretty good, right? So I met with Dave, and then the following year, I start working at uh, Valley Middle School, okay. right? Um, and then God put Dave McKegg in my life, right? So yep. um, I've been at Valley Middle School ever since. So I started out at Valley Middle School. And your Mid- job at middle school is? Right, well, right now I'm an administrator, or if you don't know what an administrator is, I'm a principal, right? Yep. If, essentially, that's what we all are, okay. right? But um, I started out, though, at Valley Middle as a, basically a para, I was working. We had a used to have like a, a quiet room or a behavior room when, when kids would get in kids mm-hmm. would get in trouble. So I I do that, and um, I was I was doing that at the time. I think I was like twenty. I was like twenty five. Okay. Twenty yeah, about twenty five, and I was doing it at the time, and I was actually in in the room, and I was working with a, a teacher there. Um, her name's Kim Walton. I was working with a teacher, and Kim's like, she looks at me, she's like, you should get your master's degree, and I was thinking to myself like, well. I graduated from undergrad with like a 2.7. I kind of struggled through. I worked hard, but I struggled through undergrad. Mm-hmm. I, was I was more focused on wrestling. I wanted to wrestle, right? right? Yep. I was like, I'm yep. going gonna, gonna to wrestle. We'll see if I get a degree. And I happened to get a degree, right? <laughs> so Kim's like, you should, get your, you should get your master's degree. And I said, I was like, yeah, man, I'll get my master's degree. So she literally, and I was like thinking like, I'll get it, but you know, I probably won't. She pulled up the application. To St. Mary's University, so oh, wow. fill the application. St. Mary's University. Eighteen months later, boom, get my I master's master. degree at, at St. Mary's. But I had my master's degree, and so once I got my master's degree, and I wasn't making much money as a paraprofessional. I was make I made like nineteen grand, right? I made nineteen grand, and at this time, I was I was twenty seven years old. Okay. Um, I made 19 grand. I was like, man, 19 grand. And I was making money here and there coaching wrestling. I was coaching, mm-hmm. I did four, I coached four years at Augsburg College and mm-hmm. I've been coaching Apple Valley ever since. Um, I and mean, now 19, you're actually working on your doctorate, right? Yeah. The up started in August. Okay. Right. But I made 19 grand and I was going to get out of, um, education. Then Dave McKegg and I talked and he's like, ah, you should stay. We'll figure something out. So I became an academic coach and then I was, I was still having a tough time passing this test. Then I figured out, not really a loophole in the system, but I found a different way that I can not even teach and I can become an administrator or a principal. Yeah. So I went back, got my principal's license, and as soon as I got my license, I mean, thank God for Dave. And I got Stacy and Steph, who will also help me a lot, who are, our, that's our administrative team, mm-hmm. Dave McKegg, uh, Dr. S- uh, Stacy Buckwall, and Steph Thomas, and myself are, are our administrative that's team. That's awesome. And so that's I went cool. back, got my administration license, and then my whole entire life, as I was going through grad school, I was like, man, I know I'm smart enough. I, I, I need to get a doctorate. I need to get a doctorate for a couple different reasons. I need to get a doctorate because from being from Gary, Indiana, it's not, there's not too many people that have doctorates. Right. Um, there people that, that have grown up in a, in a rough or tough situation. Um, I need to, need to let them know that if through hard it's work possible. and yep, it's possible. Yep. And like hard work and persistence, you can do anything you want and discipline, man. You can do anything you want. So in August, my doctoral classes start, signed up for them two days ago, and I'm ready to go. So what drives you? What drives me? Yeah. Um, what, honest to God, what drives me is just like life, man. I like, I love living life. I, I've lost a couple cousins. I lost 
I lost uh, I think probably five, five, five of my cousins and my uncle. And the last when you say like, lost them, like, explain. Uh, so I've had uh, murder. Lost five, okay. five, five cousins to murder. Lost okay. six, and I lost my uncle to murder as well. Okay. Um, two of my cousins, my cousin uh, Walter, and my cousin Darnell were like I was really close with them. So um, just that man, that things like that driving because they don't, they didn't get the opportunity. The mm -hmm. same opportunities that I have. Um, mm -hmm. So just like, just being alive, man, the lust for life. I like, I enjoy waking up at, I mean, sometimes I don't, but waking up at 4.30 <laughs> a.m., I mean, I do it every day because I like, I like, I love life, man. When, so take me through a little bit of what, what, I know you have kind of like a morning routine yeah. that you do. Yeah. And how long you've been doing this morning routine and, and Tell me exactly kind of your, your morning routine. I've been doing it for about three years. Um, so my buddy, uh, my buddy Tyler Zimmerman, who's a biology teacher at Apple Valley High School, he introduced me to this guy. His name's Jocko Willink. Right? Jocko Willink is just the okay. man, right? So I read his book. I read Jocko's book um, called Extreme Ownership, and he talks about some things about just waking up early and things like that. Mm -hmm. like, so I started working. So probably about three, three years ago, I started waking up at 4.30 a.m. I didn't think I'd be able to do it. But I start working up at 4:30. Um, usually wake up, brush my teeth, mm -hmm. have a glass of lemon water. Mm -hmm. I usually read the Bible on my phone or do some kind of meditation. Um, then after I try to get, I get to the gym by 5 a.m. Once I get to the gym, lift weights for about an hour, come back home, shower, go to work. After work, go to practice. Mm -hmm. Or if we don't have practice, usually I'll go to to jujitsu, to jujitsu, and then I'll come back. Spend some time with my family. Make sure I get somewhere in there. I'm I'm reading. Even if I'm reading like, like, even if I'm reading, like at certain periods of time. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, like to this morning, I woke up and I and I read like, I read, fell asleep, and I'll start reading again. But I, mm -hmm. I make sure that I get thirty pages in a day. Thirty pages a day. Yeah. So I know a lot of people, and I battle with this too sometimes. But a lot of people struggle with getting up early in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's four in the morning, five in the morning, six in the morning, you know, I'd say most people in America, yeah. you know, probably don't get up to like seven. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What helps you get up at four every morning? What? What? Because you said it was hard right away. Yeah. You've been doing it for about three yeah. years, but yeah. what do you think pushed you to go? Nope, I'm getting up every morning at four. What? What makes you do that? Exactly what you just said. I just did it. I like seriously. And people are gonna think I'm crazy. But you just do it. You gotta stop making excuses. You just do it. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm just gonna wake up that early. It's, there's, dude, there's no gimmick. There's no hack. There's no pill. There's no drink. There's nothing that's gonna make you better. Only thing it is is unmitigated discipline each mm -hmm. and every single day of your life. And that's what you gotta be. You gotta be disciplined. And don't get me wrong. Like two days ago, I woke up at 4:30, and I went back to sleep. I mean, so. I break sometimes. I do, but once mm -hmm. it, once you break it, like you break it, like okay, I gotta, I gotta reevaluate and I gotta get back to doing what I doing mm -hmm. what I do, man. You just you just do it. There's nothing. There's no gimmick. There's nothing to it. You can't. There's you're not gonna be able to take a pill that's gonna help you be better, mm -hmm. right? Right. It's discipline. Yeah, and I I, uh, I watched a video on uh, Will Smith uh, mm -hmm. the other day, and he talked about how discipline is everything in life. Yeah. And you know, as 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 I know, you live with discipline every single day. Because getting up every day at four a.m. that takes discipline. Yeah, absolutely. right. And making sure that you you stick with eating right, working out, mm -hmm. and all those things. So discipline has that always been at the forefront in your life? Like back when you were in high school, college, you know, um, post college. When do you think that the discipline factor in your life has been such a prevalent thing? I don't think I don't think discipline was. I wasn't always this disciplined when I was in high school and college, things like that. I think that I was fighting for my life, literally, when I was in high school and college, because wrestling was literally life or death for me. If I didn't, if I wasn't gonna succeed in wrestling, I probably wasn't gonna graduate from high school. Or I probably wasn't gonna graduate from college, and I was probably gonna go do something like I don't know, maybe sell drugs and, and something like that. But so like it was literally life or death for me. If I wasn't gonna succeed in wrestling, it's gonna be hard for, for me to succeed. And do you but, think you knew that? Do you think you knew that back in high school that if I don't stick with wrestling that I might I yeah, might not make yeah, it? Yeah, I knew that. But like I'm so headstrong, 
where I'm like, when I start something, I'm gonna, I'm gonna 100% finish it. But my di- like being as disciplined as, as I am right now, to be 100% honest with you, that just started like probably like three or four years ago after I read that book, after and I read Extreme Ownership. What do you think in that book made it click? Uh, so I read the book and I listened to to Jocko Willing's podcast. Yeah. I think what made it click is he just like you just take you just take ownership for everything that you do in life. And he mm-hmm. always his thing he always says discipline equals freedom. If you look at my cell phone, my front of my cell phone says discipline, right? Yeah. Discipline equals freedom. And what made it click is just like not making excuses for yourself. Yep. And and taking ownership for every single thing in your life. Honestly, I don't think that you can be an adult. A man or a woman until you start taking ownership for everything in your life. That's just me. Mm-hmm. No, and I, I, I truly believe that as well. Mm-hmm. I really do. Mm-hmm. So now, nowadays, what, where is wrestling at in your life? Uh, so I still, I coach, still coach wrestling at Apple Valley High School. Um, we won 25 state titles. I think we won nine state titles since I've been there. We didn't make it to the state tournament last year, mm-hmm. which was really tough for everybody. But yep. you know what? We didn't work hard enough. We shouldn't have made it to the state tournament. The other team worked harder than us, and they and they beat us. Mm-hmm. So it's like you go back to the drawing board and you figure it out. Wrestling's still a big part of my life, but I mean, eventually, I mean, probably sooner than later, I'm gonna be done coaching wrestling. Wrestling is just a stepping stone for me. I mean, my passion is education and and helping people. Right? I want to get my doctorate, not for me. I want to get my doctorate, obviously for me as well. But mm-hmm. I want to get my doctorate because I want to help. I want to. I know if I do that, I'll be able to help more people. I mean, the mm-hmm. school district, the school district that I work in is, I'm biased, but I think it's the best school district in the state and in the country, man. And yeah. I know there's kids in that district that I'm able to help. So if I need to go and fight my way through more school for another three or four years, then that's what I'm going to do to be able to help people. So wrestling is great. I love, I love Apple Valley wrestling. Right? Mm-hmm. There's nothing, there's nothing better to me than Apple Valley wrestling. Yeah. Um, it's great, but eventually, probably sooner or later, I'm going to be done coaching so I can continue to to be a better educator, be a better administrator, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So uh, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about balance yeah. because you're, you're, a, you're yeah. a newly father now, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. You just had a son. Um, mm-hmm. When was he born? Son is born April 28th. Um, came three weeks early. Mm. Came three weeks early. He was, yeah. he's, he's already a scrapper. He came three weeks early. He's like, let me out. So he yeah. just wanted to come out and start, <laughs> start scrapping. So I, obviously, as you know, and you know myself being a father too, um, it's you know getting up at four and mm-hmm. fitting in all the things you need to in a day. Yeah. And this th- this is something that is a big pet peeve of mine. But I hear yeah. a lot of people talk about you know I don't have time. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm just yeah. too busy. Mm-hmm. And I have all these other things going mm-hmm. on. So and I know we've talked about this before yeah. too, but. Where is that with you where, where you believe like, because we all have 24 hours in a day, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Right? We yeah. all have the same amount of hours in a day. Yeah. But what do you think separates you and separates people in life that are able to accomplish things yeah. above and beyond what kind of the norm is that yeah. we see? What What is it that you think that drives somebody like you to get up at four and to be disciplined and to fit everything in in a day that... That yeah. is that is unique. Yeah. So I, um, as far as my my family, and getting that in, like you said, we had 168 hours, 168 hours in a week, 24 hours in a day, right? Mm-hmm. right? Yep. So somewhere in there, I gotta fit in my family, like my son. I got 11 year old, and I got a two month old, and then I got my wife as well. I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not always like super good at that. I mean, but like, you have to fit it in, right? Mm-hmm. So. I try to make sure that even if I got to schedule it in into my day, every every night before I go to bed, I got a planner and I write my day out every night. I write what I'm going to do out the next day, day, the next day, the next day, every single night, right? Um, so like I know that I'm going to read and I know that I have to spend time. Sometimes I don't I don't really put spend time with my family, but I know after like when I when I get home, I know around what time that I'm going to be able to do that, right? Mm-hmm. So probably, yep. and I usually try to do that when I get home. So I'm usually gone from about 4.30 till about 7. And then I get home at 7. I try to spend time with my family. I make sure Kelly, my daughter, she's she's going to be, she'll be 12. I try to make sure she's all right, how school, things like that. Um, now, Sonny, try to hang out with him for a little bit. And then obviously, obviously my wife, yep. Carrie, who is, I mean, she's, 
I mean, I know everybody says this about their wife, but, like, dude, she's amazing. She's a legit. Obviously, I wouldn't have married her if she wasn't, right? <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, she's, she's great. I mean, she doesn't, she doesn't complain. She, um, she just lets me do my thing, and then she keeps, she keeps everything together. But she'll let me know. Like, she'll let me know, like, dude, you got you to gotta give, yeah. give us some attention or give me some attention. Yep. Kelly, Kelly, uh, Kelly, Kelly loves me. She's, 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 she's a, a lot like, a lot like me, but, um, I mean, she's going to be 12. I mean, she's, she can, she'll be around me for like 10 minutes. Like, all right, I'm going to go in my room. So, mm. and Sonny, he don't really do much now. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. But like, I don't know. I just, where would you like to see yourself in the next 10 years? In the next 10 years, I like to have a, uh, be done with my doctorate, uh, probably be a head principal, maybe teaching, be an adjunct professor. At, at whatever school that wants to mm-hmm. wants to hire me, and and probably invest in one of my buddy's businesses. Okay. Yeah, one hundred nice. percent. Like that's. I mean, people's like, oh, I see myself here, but like that's what I'm gonna do, right? Like that's that's all I gotta put in my head. What right? do you think about? Uh, um, so here's kind of random question. Yeah. What what when you think of the word retirement, what do you think of? I mean, that's. I don't is it like, something you think that, about? Do no, you think about it or not? No, that's a that's a word that like I don't even remember. We were talking earlier today. I don't like to put too many words in my vocabulary. Like being tired, I don't like saying tired or sick. Retirement, I don't like saying old. Uh, retirement, I mean retirement's for people. People like they like they want to retire in like Hawaii or or Arizona, but like it's not for me really because I feel like I don't know. I just like being active. I guess. Another reason why I'm getting my doctorate is when mm-hmm. I when I can retire or whatever, then I'm gonna try and go be a professor. I mean, but the the work's never done. When you're in education, your work is all. You're, it's never done mm. for the things that we're trying to do, especially in my school district. Mm-hmm. For the things we're doing in District 196, the work is never done, man. It's never done. Yeah. So it's like retirement. Uh, I don't know if retirement's for me, but we'll we'll see what happens when I we'll see what happens when I get like 65 or something like that. I mean, I'm 35 years old. That's a that's a long time. That is a long time. Yeah, yeah. So you know, people always say you need to have kind of like a why and yeah. and, and what you do and, and yeah. how you do it and why you do it. And you talk about how you like to really help people, and that's mm-hmm. why you're in education. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but when you when you think of that, do you have something deeper? deeper inside of you that that drives you yeah that helps you stay disciplined and i know you like you said high school and college change yeah. now post-college the discipline that i do now is a lot different yeah do you feel like you have something in you now that that is a driving force yeah that helps you get up at four and helps you get through some of these you know obstacles yeah. in life as you've went through them yeah um i i think I mean, I think I know most people, and I think it's almost a no-brainer to say, "Well, my family is what drives me." My family drives me, obviously, but like everything I do is not for my family. I'm not gonna say everything I do is for my family, right? Like, I know people say that, but like, but you took like you talk about balance. Yeah, a lot of things I do is for my family, but a lot of things that I do is like, and then what helps me get up and like, I like, I'm always in prayer, right? I pray yeah. a lot, right? So right. I think that's a huge thing that that drives me. Is, is praying and uh, giving thanks to God and things like that. So I think that's that's something that's and you pray daily. internal daily, man, yeah. daily, all the time. Mm-hmm. Like that's something that's super internal that I think that continues to help help drive me. And I know we got some people that don't believe. I mean, one of my good friends mm-hmm. um, doesn't really believe, but like so I still hang out with him because he's my boy. So yep. he does he doesn't really believe, but um, that's that's what that's on him. Yeah, you know. And I know earlier we were talking about, uh, you know, before we came on the show here, we were talking about how, you know, everybody is so focused on on grinding and grinding and I got to work hard, I got to work hard, I got to work, 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 yeah. right? But I think uh, when we were talking about how people kind of then neglect their bodies, yeah, yeah. they neglect their health, yeah. they neglect their sleep, yeah. and they neglect, you know, what they eat mm-hmm. and they just go, oh, that, that, that's fine, I, I'm, I'm going to be fine, I'll eat and drink what I want and I'll deal with that later. Mm-hmm. But I feel like at some point, and I, and I know you've done a very great job at this, and actually thanks to your wife, yeah. uh, a few years ago she changed my life mm-hmm. with the way I look at nutrition and the way that I look at what I eat and what I put in my mm-hmm. body. Because I feel like, you know, obviously if you feel better, you'll live better awesome. and you'll work harder. Yeah. So uh, talk to me how, how important your nutrition and your health is that keeps you going. 
Um, yeah, I mean, nutrition is important. Actually, my wife, Carrie, um, she she did the same thing to me. She helped me to understand about how important nutrition is. Cause mm-hmm. I really didn't think about it before. Because mm-hmm. I was thinking, like, oh, if I work out, then I'll be fine. But you, first of all, you can't work out a bad diet. Yep. And then even if you do work out and you're just looking huge, your insides are, are not good. But if you, you're putting the right things in your body, you're exercising, things like that, it keeps your mind fresh, right? Right. I mean, it keeps you mentally focused and mentally sharp. And that's mm-hmm. that's important. In order for you to grind or, or work hard, you can never say, oh, I don't have... I don't have time to do this. You make time for the things that you want to do. You That's right. Have, if you don't have time to work out, wake up earlier. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like, if you don't, I don't have time to meal prep. Or, or the best, people always say this to me. Well, it's so expensive. Dude, you just bought a pair of $150 shoes, but it's too expensive to go to, <laughs> go, to, go to Valley Natural Foods to buy organic food. Right. It's not too expensive. Because here's the deal. You pay for it now or you pay for it later. Uh-huh. You choose. Right, That's decide, right. right? So That's like, right. I'm gonna put the right things in my body, and I'm not saying that I'm always perfect. And I'm not, I'm not perfect by any means. Because mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I have, I drink beer. Yeah. Right. So I do that. I don't do it all the time, but every once in a while I do. But like, I'm still gonna put the, the ninety percent of the time, I'm gonna put the right things in my body. And people at work will tell you like, dude, every once in a while, especially Steph Thomas, she'll like, she'll bring <laughs> stuff to work, and like, I'm always like. Should I eat that or not? I'm like, man, right? there's donuts everywhere, dude. If you ever been to a school, dude, there's always food, man. You can find it anywhere. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't then, you know, end up breaking. So I think you were just talking about kind of like the 90 uh, 10 rule, right? Yeah. Or the 80 yeah, 20. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. explain that a little bit, because I'm sure a lot of people. So, don't know. Like, so for instance, like 90 10 or 80 20, what I do is throughout the whole entire day, from when I wake up, I usually mm-hmm. drink a, a fruit smoothie. Um, and then all through, and like this is all through the day, mm-hmm. I'll just mostly eat fruits and vegetables just because that's what makes my body feel the best. I'm not saying right. it's going to make somebody else's body feel the same cause, because everybody's different. I right. might have a cup of coffee in there, okay, but I'll eat fruits and vegetables throughout the day. And then usually when I get home, I might have something a little different. I might have, um, I don't know, a cooked meal, mostly whatever Carrie makes, yep. I try to eat. Or if she doesn't cook anything... I usually just have I'll have some more fruit or like sometimes I like salmon a lot I like fish but I don't I don't eat a ton of um, chicken and things like that or beef right but um yeah so that's that's pretty much what ninety percent of the day it's it's very healthy clean yeah you know organic foods and then that ten yeah. that can be where you sneak in a coffee or yeah. sneak in a cookie Absolutely. or you know Absolutely. what I mean but then that helps your mind stay balanced mm-hmm. yeah so you're not like always just one way mm-hmm. you know and I know there's a lot of people that there's people. I, and I think like this sometimes or not, but like don't don't believe in balance. Like, dude, I just gotta go, go, go. But you still you can do ninety twenty with ba- being balanced. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, but it's like you need some kind of balance. Rather, if someone says they don't believe in balance, that's I. That, it's not it's sustainable. A, it's impossible. You can't yeah. sustain exactly. this. You can no, you at can't. one point. It's getting, something's gonna I fall. I mean, we've I mean, we've wrestled hard, hard matches. Like really, really hard matches. Even in a second of the match, sometimes you gotta, you gotta breathe, right? Right, right. So yep. it's like it's not sustainable because you right. can go as hard. I mean, the, probably one of the reasons why I didn't wake up on Wednesday is because I was I was going super hard and I wasn't like going like crazy hard, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I went so hard and I just drilled myself. And first reason I didn't wake up on Wednesday at four thirty in the morning because I was defeated up here. Uh, I got defeated, right? Yep. And the second reason is because I wasn't balancing my life out. I was just trying to go, go, go and get everything, not even so much just trying to get everything in, but like, I'm always trying to like, I'm always trying to make myself better somehow, right. but I was doing so much of that and then I was kind of neglecting getting Neglecting sleep other and things, rest. that's yeah, right. right. And I think, and, and you know what, I'm gonna end on this point um, and then we're gonna get into our questions here, is that having that internal self mindset to be able to hit the reset button and be yeah. able to say, you know, hey, Jamel, you know, hey, Travis, hey, you're losing balance here a little bit, yeah. okay? We need yeah. to get you back, you know what I mean? And, and to know and to know yourself enough to know if you are not, you know, getting your prayer in and if yeah. you're not spending your family time and not being able to just be one, one mind focused mm-hmm. and to just neglect everything else around you. Because, yeah. yeah, sure, maybe that'll be all right for five years. Yeah. But you tell me 10, 15 yeah. years from now how that's going to go for yeah, it's you. It's going to catch up. It, you got to have that balance in yeah. life. So I like that. Yeah. That's, um, it's important. Carrie always tells me, she tells me that. It's because last summer one time I, I was like, 
I mean, I was kind of defeated. I was defeated, and then she sat she sat me down. She's like, okay, let me see like kind of where, where things are balanced at. And she, I mean, she's dude, she's she's amazing. She's, Self check. You know, yeah, yeah. So self check. So I figured out what I had to do, and then you just reevaluate and you get back to it. But do you need you need balance? As much as I don't want to be balanced, I I wish I could just grind, 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 grind. <laughs> I mean. You, you, need, you need something, some kind of balance, or you either your family life, your work life, or your nutrition and stuff. Something's not going to be right if you're not if you're not balancing all aspects. And uh. that's why I schedule out my day because that's when you schedule out your day that creates the balance. I, I'm telling you. Yes. If if you it try does. it, it creates a balance. It does. Regardless, you can see like okay, like now when I get home because before I wasn't putting times in now. Put times in. You put the times in, you're going to do stuff. And you Same hit about, those times. Yeah, and you hit those times. And sometimes you might, like having a baby, Sonny to have a blowout. Then I'm like, dang, I got to change Sonny real quick, right? So sometimes <laughs> you might not hit the times right on right on the head. But I'm you telling close. you, you get close to all your times. And that's where you're balancing. Even if you got to schedule one time with your family. I yep. got to schedule some cuddle time with my wife. Because that's what she likes to do. She wants to cuddle. So I got to cuddle. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I said I don't like it. I like cuddling, but... But I schedule that. But you know that's what she likes. That's what she likes. It's not yep. about what I like. Mm-hmm. If she likes that, then I gotta do that. So even I gotta schedule. I mean, she ta- she had to teach me that. She taught me that. Like, dude, you better schedule me in, right? So you gotta that's put right. that on the schedule too. He's like, I'm telling you, man, you gotta take the time. You take the time. I don't have time. I was talking to this young kid that I used to coach back in the day, and I was just giving him some a little bit of advice, and I said, hey, man, make sure you read books. Because so, that's going to keep your mind sharp. Mm-hmm. Keep your mind sharp. It's going to keep you. It's going to keep you disciplined. Keep your mind sharp. It's going to set you free. Yeah. Reading sets your mind free. Right. And he he wrote back to me. He said, "Well, I work and I do this and that. I don't have time to read." And you know what? I was going to say something back to him about making time and about mm-hmm. that being an excuse, but I didn't say anything back to him. The reason why I didn't say anything back to him is because I can't live his life for him. He's going to have to learn that, right? right. He's going to have to learn that and do that himself. That's right. And that's the importance of an accountability partner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Having people in your life yeah. that hold you accountable yeah. to your balance. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, let's get into our random questions. Um, so I'm going to go first, yeah. um, and then uh, you, you, can, uh, you can go second. So if you could be any animal, <laughs> what would you be? Come on, man. You already know what I'm going to be. I'm going to be a lion. <laughs> of course, that's the king of the jungle. Yeah, all I mean, right. Okay. I mean, you see lions, you see the, the, I mean, the lion that's on top. You see the king, maybe he's laying, chilling. He got like <laughs> eight lions behind him. Like, come on, man, I'm going to be a lion. Yeah, sure. all right. Um, what, uh, if you could travel anywhere right now and you could get on a plane and go to that place, where would you probably go right now today? Las Vegas. <laughs> that, that's right. I didn't know what you were gonna say yeah, on that dude, one. I mean, okay, I I love Vegas. I love Vegas, but Australia. Never been there. Okay. I want to go to Australia for sure. All right. Um, do you have a favorite food? Favorite food? Like if you could have one meal right now. One meal right now. And you could pick whatever that is. Man, Thai food for sure. Thai. Yeah, Thai is my favorite by far. Okay. Yeah, by okay. far. Hmm. All right, that's interesting. Um, how about um, if you could do if you could go back in time right now? So mm-hmm. sitting here today, if there's if there's one thing that you could go back in life on, would you say that you could you could pinpoint something in life that you could go back and change? If so, what would that possibly be? I mean, I mean, I guess. God's going to have things happen how it's supposed to happen, right? Mm-hmm. He's going to have things happen how it's supposed to happen. But if you could teleport. I mean, I guess. I mean, I know the answer that I would choose, but I don't know if I would change anything because God's supposed to have things happen how it's supposed to happen. And that's a good answer. No, that's an answer. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, do you have a favorite color? Nah, not really. I mean, not really. I don't really. I I mean, I, I dabble in a little of this and a little of that, but uh, not really, not really. Um, I like blues. I like blues. Okay. Like blues, blues good. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right, last question. Um, if you could do, like, some type of, uh, like, a super extreme sport or, like, some uh, activity, like... Dude, I got you. Well, 
All right, what would it be? I'd be a skateboarder, 100%. I love the mm. lifestyle. I would move to California. <laughs> I would, I've had one of them backpacks on that just had a skateboard in it. Okay. Dude, I would have my, my son, Sonny, with me. All right. Two months in all, I would skate everywhere. I had a longboard, I skateboard. I would hang out with Tony Hawk <laughs> and Bucky. I'm not kidding. I'd be a skateboarder for sure. Skateboard and snowboard. Okay. Yep. So I'd go from California to Colorado, back and forth, man. And I'd be killing it. Interesting. I like yeah. that. All right. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Your questions. My first, my first question. If you, can, if you could do any sport other than wrestling, what would you do? Any sport other than wrestling. Um, I would... You know, honestly, I, I'd play soccer. <laughs> why, why soccer? I, I played soccer when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, even now as I coach, um, a lot of times I'll start wrestling practices with, uh, yeah. with the boys and I'll have them play soccer. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I just think there's something really, like, kind of free about yeah. soccer, being yeah. able to run. And it's, it's, I don't know, I think I just have, like, a... I just have a, a kind of a deep attachment yeah. to soccer. I love soccer. World yeah. Cup time too right now. Right. Okay. Um, favorite favorite artist? Music, as musical as artist? Music, yeah, musical artist. As far artists. as music? Yeah. Right now living or all, in all general? In general. No, no, actually, actually, give me your top three. Go. Top living, three? Living okay. or dead? All right. Definitely Tupac. Okay. I mean, Tupac's, that's an, that's Tupac's top. Yep. Um, then I would say... Uh, Drake. Yep. Um, and then I would say, ooh, if it's only three, that's tough. Um, I'll give you five. Go, go with five. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Okay. Um, Jay Z. I was gonna say you gotta have Hove in there. Dude. Yep. And then I would probably go with um, Jeezy. Hey man, I. I mean, your top five is your top five. I mean, it's credible. You, I should give you top three because, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's cool. The, I, I like, I like, I like that question. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Um. Okay. And this is I. My last two are okay. are straight up some of the best questions I hear from Tim Ferriss. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you can, what what book do you gift the most? Like that you, if you gift a book, or what book would you want to gift to somebody? To, to help them out or and not even to help them out just something oh yeah like, no that's a good question um i would say uh well it'd be two it'd be two different books that have really been important in my life by far uh the five love Lang the five love languages yep, read that one. that's a big that's a really important book in my life mm -hmm. um that's helped me in my relationship um and then probably mm, probably crush it oh, oh, by gary that? vaynerchuk okay Yep, I would say those two books. Right now, today, you know, and that answer has probably changed throughout the years. Yeah. And I bet five years from now, yeah. that, that answer would probably change too. Yeah. Um, okay, last question. Yeah. If you can put anything on a billboard, what would you put? <laughs> that's, what, that's probably my favorite question right there. Ooh. Didn't see this. Anything. Could have, this could have a few different answers anything. to it. You know. You only get one billboard though. Only one. Love. Why love? Because I think it's the the most important, powerful thing in this world. Yeah. Because if you don't love, amen, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you don't like, love, you probably hate. <laughs> if you love, you so know, love. Hate it. Stop being hate. And and like honestly, you. I don't even I don't even want to explain why because I feel like the word itself yeah. explains everything. Yeah, that's a great answer. Right there. Thanks for being on, yeah, man. Bro. Yeah.